Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to day two of the New Year party. I'm your host, Sarah Mayer, and I am here to guide you through day two. Now, before we jump in, I want to say that if you're like, wait, how did we get to day two? I just found this on YouTube. Well, we are hosting a New Year party and you're invited. Because this is the year you should be able to set and crush your goals. So if you haven't joined the New Year Party, go to sarahmayer.com slash New Year Party 2023 and sign up and jump back to video one and the welcome video on the playlist. All right. If you watch the welcome video and you watch day one, I hope you did your homework and started with reflection. Because I know that as a high achiever, an overachiever, maybe you really want to jump into the goal setting part and the setting of resolutions and picking your theme and all that fun stuff. And many people do this. They jump right in and they post it on social. But we know the research shows that we know that only 8% of people actually achieve their New Year's resolutions. You know why? Because they don't take the time to go through the process to really set good New Year's resolutions and good goals. I got to raise my seat up a little bit. So you're here because you truly, truly, truly want to set great goals and great resolutions this year. So I hope you went back, watched the video, uh, day one reflection, you took some notes, you got your notebook out, I have mine, and you really thought about those questions. You did the work. It may have taken you a little longer than five minutes, hopefully, and you probably got a lot of great insight because the key to how you set and achieve goals truly lies in what you did last year. It's also the key to how you're getting stuck if some of these goals have been stuck and you haven't been able to achieve them. I hope you got some gold nuggets. I hope you really reflected on last year because now we're going to dive in to the fun stuff. So before we dive in, I do have a little secret. I don't like smart goals. I said it. They don't work. So that's the secret. We are going to break down the various different types of activities that you can do in the new year to help you set and crush your goals. And another little secret, I do all of these. I set goals, I set resolutions, I create a theme, I have a word for the year, and I do have a vision board. You don't have to do all of these things, but you can. And so we're going to dive into all of those things. But first, I want to jump back to SMART goals because I let you in on my little secret. And so now we're going to break down why you ended up here. Like so many people, maybe you set and crush goals all the time and you're here to really focus on 2023. Or maybe you're here because you have set a goal or two or a resolution and they just didn't stick. And that's totally normal. And the reason that these goals or resolutions or even vision boards didn't work is because you probably rushed to get those created. Maybe you needed to post them on social media because everybody else was doing it. Or it was January 1st and the timer came about. Oh, total side note. Whether you started this journey, this party on January 1st or January 30th, it runs the entire month. You are not behind. You can do this in any order and set these goals when you truly believe this is what you want. So let's break down a couple things. Let's start off with New Year's resolutions. Everybody's doing them. Well, maybe not everybody because now they know they don't work. So some people have completely abandoned resolutions and resolutions have a long history People have been setting resolutions for hundreds and hundreds of years. And many times people are 
truly trying to make a change and move forward. And so I want to share the true definition of resolutions. So give me one sec. I'm going to pop that on your screen really quick. This is the definition of a resolution. So if you're not familiar with resolutions, this is the actual definition. I got this off the Google. So it's a firm decision to do or not do something. A firm decision. So the example is she kept her resolution not to see Anne anymore. I don't know what Anne did, but she kept the resolution not to see Anne anymore. Number two, the quality of being determined or resolute. And this is, he handled that last French actions of the war with resolution. So it's really determination, it's purpose, it's a resolve. And I think it's so important that we remember when we think about resolutions is they truly should be something that we are absolutely sure we want to do. We're resolving to either do something or not do something. We are resolving to either do something or not do something. And there's really no time limit on that. It's like, we're just not going to do it or we are going to do it. And so I think the word that really comes to mind is purpose. You saw that in the definition, purpose. And so many people start with resolutions and they start the year and say, from a place of negativity, what didn't I accomplish last year? Let me resolve to do that. And I caution you to really stop that practice because that may not truly be what you want to resolve. It may be something you just think, oh, I should do this. You know, all the shoulds out there. I should be more healthy. I should work out in January. I should stop drinking in the month of January. And some of those things you may truly want, but some of them are just things that you are doing because you should do that or you feel you have to. And so then when things get in the way, because we know most resolutions get abandoned in February, when the kids' school is going crazy, your work is blowing up, you have so much to do, what's the first thing that goes? those resolutions that you weren't really committed to anyway. You hadn't really resolved to do those. They weren't really your purpose. And that's why New Year's resolutions don't work. All right. So you may be saying, all right, I'm not going to do resolutions because they don't work. No, you absolutely should. And they should be a result of your goal setting where you decide what you truly want. And then you resolve to do some of the actions that will get you to your goal. So let's talk about goal setting. I already let you in on a little secret. Smart goals don't work either. <laughs> I don't like them. Why don't I like smart goals? Well, the reason I don't like smart goals is because if you truly are setting a goal to achieve something that is big and bold and worthy of spending all this time and energy on, it may not fit in the SMART format. So if you're like, what is a SMART goal? SMART goals are a format that somebody came up with that said, in order for you to achieve your goal, it should be in this format. It should have a time and a deadline. And I'm not going to go into all of that because we don't need to really talk about that. But I want to talk about why I don't think these work. Because when you truly are working on something that is bold, exciting, and lights you up, it's usually not easy. Sometimes, most of the time, you can't accomplish it in a year. And there's a gap where you are now and where you need to be to achieve that. Sometimes it's a learning gap. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes there's like 15 different things you need to do to even start thinking about that. And so there's a big gap. So when you truly get into your true desires 
and your big goals. Some people call these their legacy projects. And then you get into this mindset of, okay, well, I need to put it in a smart format. When am I going to get this done by? Ooh, stuck because I don't even know. I have to have like a lot of money to do this. And then your head gets all, and you go from being excited about your dream and your big idea to being frustrated because you know that there's a big gap and you don't know when a realistic time frame is and you don't know how to make it measurable. Like, how do I measure? Some of the things I want to do in my life, like how do I measure that? And so it sucks the life out of your big idea, your big goal. It's like popping a balloon that all the air goes out of it. So you then you may share that with somebody else in a smart format, like I will have my dream home in five years. And have you ever had a friend like that who says, but you don't you don't even live in that state? And, or your spouse may say, but we don't, we don't make enough money for that. Or you want to build and renovate a home. Hmm. We don't even know how to do that. What about the kids in school? Are we going to move them? And your big dream, your big goal, your big idea, maybe in a smart format now, but it's not exciting. It's like the Debbie Downer. And then what also happens is you put a date on that. And when you get closer and closer and closer to it, you may say, well, I didn't really want that in the first place, or that wasn't really realistic. And so smart formats suck the life out of goals. All right. So you may be thinking, well, great. I'm not going to set resolutions. I'm not going to do goal setting. I will do a word or theme for the year. And I actually love words and themes for the year. If they're tied to something bigger, if they're tied to that goal. So we're going to reverse engineer all of this. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I've been doing goal setting totally backwards. You probably have because you have jumped from, I need a goal set, put it on your task list, set the goal, Check that off the box, goal setting done in January, and I have achieved that because that's what we've been taught to do in society is to set a goal, put it in a format, and then like a lot of businesses and people, it ends up sitting on a shelf never to be looked at again because it's not incorporated into the daily life. And then what happens is it maybe truly wasn't your goal, but you shoved it in a format You rushed to put a goal on paper because you had to because it's January. So it maybe truly wasn't your goal or life gets in the way and your goal is so big and there's such a gap. There's so many things you need to learn in order to achieve it that you tell yourself, oh, maybe I didn't want that in the first place or you don't have a plan to achieve it. All right. So if you're sitting here like, okay, Sarah, we understand why all these things don't work. Now, what do we need to do? That's why we're here. But I'm going to tell you a little story first. So when I was a very, very, very young girl, I started riding horses and I wanted to be a world champion equestrian. That's a huge goal. Huge. And I knew I wanted this goal. But there was a big gap. You see, I didn't have a horse. I didn't have a lot of money. I wasn't a trainer's child, so I didn't have a lot of time to ride. I couldn't necessarily accomplish all of these things because of that. And it was a gap. But I didn't give up on that dream. Let's also talk about how I had a trainer who told my mom that I wasn't talented and she was wasting my money, her her money, putting me through this. Now, if I had known then what I had known now, I would have set that goal, kept it a little bit private because when I told people, they told me I was crazy. I went to school. People told me I was crazy. I remember when I sat with my high school counselor 
and told her that I wanted to train horses as a career, she told me that that was not a career, which I knew was incorrect because several of the barns that I worked at had full-time employees. So that, that was a career actually, but I had all these people who told me, no, no, no. But what I didn't have was a system and what I didn't have was a plan, but I had a why and I had a purpose. There was a reason that I truly wanted to accomplish this goal. And that was because I really loved horses and I really, really wanted a horse to that was an underdog like myself to win a world championship. So fast forward, you may be wondering if I ever achieved that goal. Yes, I set that goal when I was about six. I think that's when I started riding and realized there was an even a world championship thing. And I achieved that goal when I was 21. There were many, 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 many steps in between. I have many, 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 many journals writing about this. Had I had a system of tracking this goal, I probably wouldn't been able to crush this goal way sooner. But I never lost sight of that goal. And so why do I share this story? Because the big things, the things that truly, truly matter in life are not things you can resolve on January 1st and accomplish on December 31st. They truly are lifelong things, 20, 30 years, but not all your goals have to be these big things. But I do hope that one or two of them are really big that stretch you, that actually help you to accomplish your legacy. So throughout this process, we're going to talk about the different types of goals, which we'll get into on day three. So if you're like, I want to write the goals, day three, patience, patience, we will get there. So what do I encourage you to do today? You reflected on last year. You looked at what brought you happiness. You looked at what brought you joy. You really, really focused in on last year. There are gold nuggets in that journaling and reflection that you did yesterday. So today, it's time to dream. What are your big ideas? What are your big goals? When you look back in 10 to 15, 20, 30, 40 years from now, what do you hope that you will have achieved, accomplished, and built? None of this shoulds, like, you know, I hate when we ask kids and they're like 10 and we're like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they're like, I I have no idea. My brother wanted to be a garbage man. (laughs) And people tell them, you don't want to be a garbage man. You'll be stinky. He just wanted to jump on and off trucks. But in his head, he was told that was not good enough goal because somebody judged that. So I really want you to sit down maybe with the same notebook. I have the same notebook. And I want you to put every idea you have on paper. Just list them all out. What are those ideas? Wouldn't it be great if I, money is no object. Your current situation, no object. It could be in your personal life, your business, whatever. But what I really want you to do is after you do this exercise, after you get it all out, spend 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe an hour on it, whatever. I want you to look at that list and get inspired because you have some really cool goals, ideas, dreams, and hopes. So take that list, make that big list, and let yourself go wild. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Just go wild. Put pen to paper and get it done. All right. That's your activity for day two. And for those of you who are looking to the end and you're like, okay, what are we going to do? When are we going to get to the point where I can post this on social media? Don't worry. You are going to have great goals, great plans this year. Do the work and we will get there. Happy New Year, everyone. Stay tuned for day three.